Hello, my best friend. Would you like to go take a nap? You don't want to hear this story again. You don't want to relive this trauma, I promise. Hello and welcome to the first video of 2024. I hope you all had an amazing holiday season and we are going to start this year out with a bang, okay? This is a story time video and I, I'm almost lost for words. Uh, you see it in the title, all right? I'm not gonna beat around the bush. Elton got thrown up on. And it's worse than you're probably thinking. Honestly, it was traumatizing for everybody involved, but frankly, mostly Elton. He just heard me say his name, so he came wandering into the room. Hello, baby. Um, I think it's obvious, but if you have a vomit phobia, this video is not for you. I apologize in advance to my editor, who I know does. You're welcome. <laughs> We're good. We're fine. We did it. We survived. <laughs> uh, Robin and I both have a vomit phobia, which makes this story worse for me. Like the fact that I had to live through this. Uh, my vomit phobia is like adjacent to my choking phobia, which is like, I have a very severe choking phobia. I think about choking, not just me, but everybody, my dog, my friends, my family, my loved ones, strangers at restaurants on a daily basis. Um, because I've had a lot of choking in my past and I feel like vomit phobias are like adjacent to choking because you feel like you can't breathe during that experience. So that's where that comes from. And also I get like super nauseous when I'm anxious. It's a whole cycle. But anyways, I always send my team like the list of content for the month ahead of time. So I sent it yesterday and immediately got a text from Robin and she was like, girl, I cannot believe that happened to you. I was like, mm, just wait. So. Let's get into it. It happened in August. August was quite the month. I was feeling very burnt out this past summer, like physically, mentally, I was just feeling very burnt out. And a lot was going on in life and I just knew that I needed to get away for a bit. But I didn't just wanna go on like a cruise for a week and lay by a pool. Like that, yes, in certain ways would be rejuvenating, but I needed something deeper than that. I needed something more than that. So I was looking into wellness retreats, like retreats that are specifically focused on mental and physical health. And I ended up finding one that was able to slot me in for seven days in August. Um, the specific one that I did, you can do one, two or three weeks. I was only doing one and it was my first time ever doing a wellness retreat. I have done many wellness related things, but I've never done an entire retreat devoted to it. And I have to say, I loved it. It was amazing. Um, it took a trek to get there. It was close, all things considered. Like wellness retreats are not that common. They're not just everywhere. And so all things considered, it wasn't Costa Rica, you know, which is where a lot of yoga and meditation wellness retreats are. I had to take like an hour long drive, then like an hour and a half long ferry, then a two to two and a half hour drive. So basically like, five, six hours of travel. Then spent the week there. It was super remote. It was on the waterfront. It was just a week of super healthy eating, doing yoga, meditation, um, different seminars, getting massages and different treatments like acupuncture, um, somatic therapy, like just a whole bunch of wellness things, Reiki, all that kind of stuff. Um, a lot of stuff that people be like, ooh, woo-woo things, which it is, and I'm into woo-woo things. So I was down and I had a lot of fun. And I met some amazing people. The food was honestly incredible. I felt so healthy, just taking all my supplements, eating the most delicious plant-based diet. It was fabulous, loved every moment of it. But at the end of the week, I was like, you know what? I feel good. Like I am ready to go back to life and grind again and just kill it at life. I'm feeling so rejuvenated. I was mentally and physically feeling so energized, which is exactly what I wanted to get out of the week. And we had to make the exact trek home. So we we prepped, we like pre-ordered some meals from them. So they like packed us up a lunch for our long day of travel home of the delicious plant-based foods. And we packed up and we left pretty early in the morning, like right after breakfast. We had breakfast, we grabbed our pre-packed lunch and snack, and then we got on the road. And that day, like I couldn't figure out if it was gonna be warm or cold. Like I was like, it seems like it's gonna warm up, but in the morning it's cold, but maybe the ferry will be AC'd. I don't know, like I was just trying to prep. So what I did was I wore, I wore like a unitard, you know, like um, it's like a one piece kind of sporty tank top straps and then biker shorts, but it's all one piece, kind of like this. I wore one of those 
It was lavender colored. Underneath sweatpants and a hoodie. And then I had sneakers on. I had my backpack with my neck pillow for the long day of travel. I had my noise canceling headphones. I was ready to just tuck in and relax. And the first leg of the journey, which was like that two, two and a half hour bus ride back to the ferry terminal was on like a mini bus. It's like a passenger van. So I think it's at like 12 to 13 people and you would make stops along the way. So when we got on, there was probably like two or three people on already. And then we stopped multiple times and picked up more people until it was completely full. No empty seats aboard. And we didn't realize that you could reserve the front seat ahead of time, which in retrospect is what we would have done had we known, because that way I could sit with Elton at my feet in the front wheel well, which is typically where I would sit in most cars. So it was kind of like tricky to figure out what was gonna be the best spot for Elton, because on the journey there, there like was an empty spot, so he had some good space, but on the way back, there wasn't, and so it was a bit more squishy. But there was this one spot that I was able to tuck in where the door was kind of right in front to the side of me. So it had like the step was right in front of my feet. And then on the right was the, the door that swung or that like slid open. And then beside me was a gap. So it was just like my seat, then a gap, and then two more seats and then bench behind me, benches in front of me. So that was kind of the setup. So Elton was able to sit between my seat and then the two seats next to it. And he fit perfectly comfortably there. And that way, anytime we did stop and people were loading, he and I could just hop off. I could walk him a bit. He could maybe go pee. And then when everybody was on, we'd get him back on. And that was kind of the system. But that said, the bus driver was like, why don't you sit like in the front bench until we get full? So he has like more room for as long as possible. So that was kind of what we were doing. And then he said to me, you know, next stop is when you're going to have to get him into the seat behind. So why don't you just go now? My God, how I wish I hadn't. Like the most frustrating part about this whole thing is that if I had waited till the actual stop that Elton needed to sit in that seat for, all of this would have been avoided. One stop, but that driver just happened to suggest, why don't you just go back there now? And I did. <sighs> oh, so terrible. So we're sitting there all tucked in snug as a bug. I've got my bag at my feet and it's like in the step. And then Elton is beside me, neck pillow on, headphones on with noise cancellation. Okay, so I can't really hear what's going on. I could hear if somebody spoke very loudly but I can't hear like the hum of the road. I can't hear the general noises that are happening around me. I would only be able to hear if somebody was talking loudly. I was listening to a true crime podcast. Nobody's surprised. That's how I pass most of my free time. So that's what I'm doing. My eyes are closed, just leaning against my neck pillow, relaxing. Okay, I am in the most zen headspace. I just spent a week in the middle of nowhere eating healthy food focusing on mind, body, spirit, health, and wellness, I am feeling optimal. Nothing can shake me, or so I thought. I feel Elton begin to rustle, and that's when I hear somebody behind me yelling to the bus driver, somebody's throwing up. I was thinking, oh no, is Elton throwing up? Because he's rustling. I wish it was Elton that was throwing up. The driver immediately pulls over into a parking lot, like an empty parking lot, and opens the back sliding door and Elton bolts. I am telling you, that dog flew out of that car, jumped over my backpack, over my feet, and out the door. He was not waiting a second longer. And then I quickly realized why. The smell begins to permeate. We all exit immediately because we are all disgusted. Everybody kind of just like disperses within this parking lot into their own little huddles. Elton is the furthest from the van. He has bolted far from that van. <laughs> My mom and I are over with him. And when I tell you, I have never seen Elton do this. It was so funny. He was sitting stick straight upright and not moving a muscle. It was pure shock. 
The dog was in utter shock. His face was like, it was very, if I don't move, it's not real. If I don't move, I won't smell it and I won't feel it. Wasn't he just in utter shock, mom? Yes. It, it was shock. It was unbelievable. He was so grossed out. I love him. He took it well, but mm. it was It was horrible. rough. Okay, so I'm gonna get graphic. Skip to this time code. Skip like, for those who can't see the time code I'm writing, skip like a minute ahead if you don't want details. Um, this is gross, but it was like, it was morning time, right? So this was like breakfast. Okay, it was milky. It was sour. Oh, it was, and it was all over Elton's back half. And, and, and I'll have you know, now me. Because as Elton bolted, he's a long haired dog with a flu for tail, which caught the brunt of it. And it sprayed on to me and my backpack as he exited. And so I am stripping in this parking lot. I have never been so happy that I had that like unitard situation underneath my sweatsuit. I was like, I might be freezing the rest of the day, but at least I won't have a stranger's throw up on me. It was on my backpack, my neck pill, it was on everything. And the, bless this driver, okay? He's like cleaning up the car. Poor guy, like he has his Kleenexes out and he has a spray. This is clearly not his first rodeo. He's cleaning it up like a champ. Everybody else is in shock murmuring. My mom got some of the towelettes. I had hand sanitizer, so I'm like sanitizing everything I can. We put some sanitizer on Elton's tail. And my mom was like using Kleenex to like wipe off as much of it as we could and like some water from a water bottle to try to wipe him down. I had some anti-nausea medication in my bag because when you have a slight phobia of such things and also I can get road sick, like car sick and on a long day of travel, I always have my anti-nauseas with me. Basically in every handbag, I've got a little thing of my anti-nausea because you just never know when it's gonna hit. So I had those, so I gave them to my mom and I said, do you wanna go offer them to this person? It was like a male and his partner in their like 20s. So my mom goes up and, and gives them the anti-nausea medicine. And this is like, look, none of us can control when we get sick, right? Like it is not that person's fault. I mean, ideally, you would ask them to pull over, right? In an ideal world, you'd ask them to pull over. For me, I also always have poop bags on me, so I'm always prepared to pull one of those out if I feel nauseous. Um, so ideally, like something like that, you, you're like, can, I, can we pull over? I feel like I'm gonna be sick. That didn't happen. Such is life, maybe it hit quick. I'm not here to judge, right? It's like, do I wish he hadn't turned to his right and thrown up between the two seats where my dog was laying? Obviously I do. Ideal if he had thrown up on his own feet, not my dog. because. He ultimately had to turn to the right in order to get Elton instead of downward. So yeah, I do wish that he had made a different choice. But again, when you're feeling that sick, you're not necessarily always thinking right. So I don't blame him for any of that. The only thing I do, I'm a little salty about is like he didn't apologize, you know? He like took the nausea medicine, didn't really say thank you after throwing up on my dog and me giving him medication and then like didn't apologize. And I was like, the I feel like the least you could do if you throw up on somebody's dog is be like, I'm really sorry about that. I shouldn't have leaned to the right, but such is life. I'm not here to hold a grudge, though I did for the rest of that solitary day because as you know, the day was far from over. We all pile back into the car. I promptly put a mask on, okay? I, I put uh, essential oils into the mask, put the mask on and tried to block everything out. Like I was like, if I just smell this lavender in my mask for the rest of this car ride, none of this is real. Cause this was only 30 minutes into the two and a half hour drive. And guess what? Guess what we did? We hit traffic. So it became like a three hour and 15 minute drive. And also by about halfway through, I began to have to pee like a racehorse because one of the things we were doing all week is drinking copious amounts of water. And I was now so in the routine of drinking copious amounts of water that I was just like, not thinking and continue to do that. And my bladder was going to burst. So now I have the most full bladder. My dog stinks to high heavens. I'm a little chilly. And um, the drive is going on longer than expected, which means we're also now worried we're going to miss our ferry because you pre-book your time. And we would have to then wait at the ferry terminal for a couple more hours to get the next one. Just isn't ideal on a day like this. After such a lovely week. And so, Finally, we get to the ferry terminal like just on time. And I am like, I cannot 
get on that ferry without peeing. Like it's a non-negotiable. And you know when you have to pee so bad, you actually can't even run to the bathroom. Like you have to slowly waddle. I know some of you know what I'm talking about. You have to pee so intensely. You look pregnant and you're like, I actually can't move in a fast pace or I will piss myself. I need to like slowly waddle my way to maintain bladder control. <laughs> so that's the state I was in. My mom was like, we've got to get to the ferry. I was like, ma'am, I'm gonna pee myself. We already have a vomit covered dog. We don't need me peeing on myself too. And so we make it to the bathroom and still make it to the ferry on time. But I am, I have now removed my mask. I'm standing in line and it is in that moment, like as we're waiting to get on the ferry, that I not only feel bad for myself and Elton and my mom, I feel bad for everybody standing around us in this tight space trying to get on the ferry because the smell is radiating pungently. It is intense. It is so foul and there's nothing we can do. Like we have cleaned him off as much as possible. Thankfully, he wasn't licking himself. Like I think he was even so grossed out that he was like, I am not looking at my back half. And thankfully it wasn't on his front half. Like it didn't get on his face or anything. It was basically like mid torso back. So like his back, legs, feet, and tail. He would not even like turn to look at it. He was like, I am disgusted with myself. I am aware, I'm gross. And usually dogs like gross things. Like dogs will eat poop, dogs will eat their own vomit, dogs will eat nasty things. No, not in this moment. He was disgusted. He's a, he's a prince, okay? He was like, gag, I'm disgusted. So I'm standing there and I'm trying to figure out, my mom had given me her cardigan. I was cold. As mentioned, I had, take, I had to take off my sweater and sweatpants. And so I just had like a tank top and shorts on and I just run cold. I'm just a cold blooded person. And it wasn't like the warmest day. So I was a little chilly. So my mom had given me the cardigan that she had been wearing. So I'm like trying to figure out what smells so bad other than Elton, because it's like in my vicinity, it's not just him. So I'm like sniffing myself in line and I realized like it got on my mom's cardigan because she was wearing the cardigan when cleaning Elton off and he was, you know, like shaking off a bit and stuff like that. So it sprayed on her a bit. It was like literally it was everywhere. And so then we had to get on the ferry. We sat far away from everybody. And frankly, I sat far away from Elton. We, we like sat in like a very private area. And like, I was like, Elton, you sit there. I will hold your leash and sit on the far end of your leash. It was very funny. And then we pre-warned my dad. We were like, get the shampoo out. We're doing an impromptu bath when we get home. And we were trying to figure out like, we we're like, how do we get in like an Uber or a taxi? But thankfully we got in a taxi that had like a trunk. So we put Elton in the trunk, like, you know, it's like one of the trunks that's open to the car. So he was in the trunk, like looking over the seat at me. And then we blasted the AC and had the windows down. The taxi driver was very nice. And um, we got home in the hallway. My dad met us. We like didn't even let Elton in the apartment. We put everything down that was contaminated in the hallway to deal with later. I came in, I stripped down, I showered. And then we took Elton outside with a hose and dog shampoo and cleaned him up the best we could, thankfully. By the grace of God, he already had a grooming booked for the next morning. He gets professionally groomed every six weeks. Uh, I call it his groomy groomies. He loves it because he's prissy and he loves to be perfect. So he gets his paws shaved. So he has like the perfectly clean pads and he gets around his booty hole shaved. He gets his, um, his pants, his back pants uh, trimmed. He gets his elbows on the front trimmed. He gets his anal glands expressed. He gets a wash and a blowout and a brushy brush. Like he gets the whole works done every six weeks. The ears cleaned, the claws clipped, like the whole shebang. And he just happened to have it booked for the next morning. Thank God. So he went, I've never seen him more happy to be groomed. He's always thrilled about it, but he seemed extra thrilled. He knew, he knew. And um, I hope that that never happens again. And I hope it never happens to any of you, but if it has, if you have a funny story where you have thrown up on somebody or somebody has thrown up on you, please do share. Let's hear it in the comment section below. Let's bond over this disgusting, unique experience. And I hope you enjoyed this little story time to kick off the new year. I hope I didn't upset anybody's tummies too much. I had to live through it, so retelling it is much less traumatizing than living through it. So I feel fine. Uh, did not in that moment though. So glad that's done and behind us. 
And here's to no throw up in 2024. Sending you all love and I will see you next week. Until then, you can click over here if you wanna see another story time video or you can click over here to see me try playing Forza Motorsport, a racing game that has specific features designed for blind people to be able to drive race cars in a video game. Check that out, it was so fun. And I will see you next time, bye.